Hello, welcome back to Blender Sushi Live Noting. In this episode, I'm gonna share um, this simple setup. Um, again, this is like a revisit of how you can convert um, 2D pixel image into um, 3D objects. Like in this case, I'm just using a cube. And if, if I expand this and, and then turn it into 3D view, you can see this is just like a 3D box cube. And, and it's a four by four, so we have 16 cube and the color is actually transferring from this pixel image into um, 3D objects. And everything is actually live. And I want to share this because uh, I think this is a very good example of how you can understand the whole process. It's actually quite rather simple. Um, so first of all, I start with this uh, 4 by 4 pixel, which is like only like 16 pixel of image. And in Blender, for, for a single pixel, you can have RGBA, uh, red, green, blue, and alpha channel. So you're going to end up with a 64 because it's the 4x4 four four times RGBA. So you have 64 uh, value in total. And you can see here image size 4x4 four four RGBA. And I'm using Sphere Chalk add-on to, to show you all the process. First of all, we can use this object ID selector and I'm selecting an image and the image, uh, I specifically point out this image, RGBA, and then I turn on this pixel. And as a result, we're gonna have um, actually a list, like a big list of numbers. This big uh, pixels list of number is actually not separated into RGBA but we can easily separate it um, if you like. First of all, but we need to split it um, every four. We're gonna split it into this kind of array. So RGBA, RGBA, and then we get that list. I'm using um, list split to do that. List split, split size four, level two, and unwrap it. And if you really like to separate the color, you can always use color out and we desist. Uh, Turn on the alpha, so you have uh, now you are separating the red, green, blue, and alpha value. So that's first. Um, and the RGBA is not in the, in the not within the map of zero to two five five. It's more like zero to one. It's like a, it's basically floating value, so you can have more colors. Keep that in mind. So we, we are splitting the color, so that's fine. And the next thing I did was simply to since we already have this uh, RGBA color data, we can simply pipe it in into the objects. And so I'm instancing the objects, basically this box being instanced. And for each instance of the object, I'm giving a different color based on the pixel. And um, the position uh, itself based on this uh, plane grid, I specify four by four and then this is the the stepping distance value and I'm outputting it as viewer B mesh and as a result we're gonna have objects uh, with this kind of naming I'll show you in the in the outliner so the name is like uh, by default in sphere talk you're gonna have this beta underscore zero one and then etc etc and this thing will will get sorted if you bring it in into Spread talk is gonna actually get so, uh, sorted wrongly. So if you are piping piping the the color data right away, you're gonna get uh, something that's a bit wrong, which is like this. So that's why I have this setup up here that's kind of sorting the objects. So it's now sorted correctly. So I'll show you what I mean. So um, I'm outputting the instance of the objects using Sphere Chalk. So we have 16 objects in the scene. And if we bring it back into Sphere Chalk, it actually gets sorted um, by its name. And if, if the naming system is like this, 0, 1, it's going to um, kind of mess up the sorting a little bit. And this is when uh, Python comes in handy. So in this case, really, I'm, uh, I simply get the name of every object and then splitting the name based on the underscore and I'm just getting the the second element after the underscore which is just a number and I'm using that 
to sort to sort it using this uh, list node. So yeah, there's a little bit of processing here, um, kind of like uh, converting from string data format and then join it back and then convert it into integer, which is just like a normal number and then using it as a key for list sorting. But this is like all kind of things that normally you will encounter if you are using Python and doing some coding. So nodings can really help uh, for you to understand that. And as a result, we have this assorted value for our pixel. Um, let's say if I'm using a different image, <clears throat> it's actually pretty easy. Uh, once you, uh, if you're changing this image with a like a different image, you can easily get a this a 3D pixel happening. Uh, you just need to make sure that the uh, the grid, the number of grid, is actually correct. Like if you have like 16 by 16, then you need to kind of um, accommodate for that as well. So this need to be uh, the same as the pixel dimensions. Maybe I need to work that out as well but I just gonna leave it in here uh, so but basically that's the whole process and yeah I think uh, what's nice about if you're doing coding and then you kind of stuck and then you do a little bit of noting just for distraction kind of like a brainstorming what's actually going on uh, look at the uh, look at all the data and then compare it and then you will eventually figure out uh, what's kind of wrong or some kind of logic you don't understand when you're doing coding because coding normally when you do the coding you don't see much um, of a visualization of what you're doing often time but in a more modern uh, programming language like Swift for example you can normally visualize what's going on with the with the object or the data that you're processing at that point in time and with nodes, I think it's uh, it can be very helpful, and I I, I saw a lot of um, visualizations using um, NumPy, SkyPy, and Matplotlib or whatever like for data scientific visualizations. Lots of codes are really like uh, not very visual. I found um, I don't know if they get they get used to work that way, then that's fine. But I I found it uh, that being able to do this in blender actually can be very very helpful for that um, even though this is like a simple example just a kind of processing 2d pixel into 3d um, maybe in near future i'll try to look into more like to like image processing and try to kind of fit in the the python code into nodes and let's see what we can do with with that um, so yeah, that's pretty much it for this live coding. Um, hopefully this is useful. Let me know what you think and I'll see you next time. Bye.